Doug Ford has met with some area First Nations leaders, but not all of them are on board with his government's priorities. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Ontario Premier made his way to Greenstone yesterday to renew partnerships with four area First Nations. Not all of the chiefs are pleased with the province's priorities though when it comes to working with their communities. Justin Hardy was in Greenstone for the announcement yesterday and joins us in studio with the details. Justin. Thank you, Ryan. Doug Ford made a brief appearance at the future site of the McGeezy Plaza on Tuesday where he confirmed agreements with the First Nations and promised to build or improve highway infrastructure connecting the four communities. But officials from Ganugaming were not celebrating as much as the others as they say the more pressing issues in their community are not being addressed. Doug Ford met with leadership from Long Lake 58, Aroland First Nation, Animbigo Zagin, Anishina Beck, and Ganugaming First Nation to sign letters of confirmation to support renewed partnerships with the four communities. He also announced $1.9 million for the Indigenous Workforce Development Program and $2 million to fund the construction and maintenance of the McGeezy Plaza rest stop on Highway 11, just outside Geraldton. Without your collaboration and cooperation, this would not be happening right now. This is your legacy that you can drive by and, and tell your children, your grandchildren, if it wasn't for your leadership and everyone's cooperation, uh, this wouldn't be happening right now. And it's such an honour to be here with you today, especially during National Indigenous uh, History Month. These opportunities that we have before us is, um, is going to create employment for our, for our communities. They're going to enhance our communities, you know, in, in every which way. You know, we're all here for the same reason, prosperity, to make our communities grow. Ford also announced plans to build and improve highway infrastructure and to develop a pre-charge diversion program with relevant First Nations and police services, as well as plans to relocate the Greenstone OPP detachment funded by Greenstone Goldmine. Not every community leader in attendance was celebrating. Ganugaming First Nation says that its chief participated Tuesday in duress. The community has been in a continuous state of emergency for the past 30 days. Chief Sherry Taylor says her community's suffering hasn't been addressed by the provincial and federal governments. Our community is not starting at the same place in the starting line when it comes to Ontario's focus on investments in Greenstone. It is not missed on me that projects that benefit the government of Ontario are taking precedence over the resolution of our state of emergency. And that seven decades of grievances that we've experienced have not been resolved. The Premier was not made available for any questions from the media following the announcement. Minister of Indigenous Affairs and First Nations Economic Reconciliation Greg Rickford says he and his office will be following up with Ganugaming leadership about issues it's facing immediately. He also called on Federal Minister of Indigenous Services Patty Haidu to assist. And I hope that the Federal Minister will pay attention to what's gone on here today with the full support of the First Nations communities and commit now here today that when I call, she'll pick up the phone, she'll say, hello, Greg, let's, let's address these uh, residual matters uh, that Chief Taylor um, uh, mentioned. Some of Ganugaming First Nations grievances include industry and land sale activities, including water diversion being carried out on traditional territories without compensation or economic inclusion, and failure to implement a mining withdrawal to protect or preserve ongoing treaty land entitlement candidate lands. Justin Hardy, TBT News.